knives yes knives so let's really quickly explain what knives are all about uh, knives are well of course as you guys know are an ability that works both defensively and offensively but mostly the use that you really would like to give it up to this day is the defensive what well, is the defensive of course because well there's not many abilities in Assassin's Creed for that they can really work as a defense now uh, the thing with this is that with what I'm going to say now, well, it really will change the way that the game is played because now knives won't be as much of a defensive ability. Uh, I mean, they will be. They'll still remain useful for some things, but uh, mostly you'll really have to consider a different strategy rather than defending. I mean, you'll really have to think of um, eva evasion-like, evasion-like strategy where you're trying to evade your pursuer while getting to your target, killing your target, and then hopefully, if you can stun your pursuer, you stun them. But if you cannot stun, stun your pursuer and you just can get your kill, when you might as well settle for that because that's really um, the kind of style of play that this game uh, like uh, helps. Like the the game mechanics really help that style of play. Of course, it really depends on the mode. Of course, I mean. But even in Deathmatch and Wanted, and I think probably, well, even Assassin it, uh, it kind of favors that uh, you get your kill and even if you die. As long as you get a reasonable or maybe a good kill, then it's really going to be worth it. Anyway, uh, knives, uh, when you knife a person, uh, both of their kill and attack rate, uh, kill and stun ranges, they decrease. So you it kind of you would say it gives you a window to stun them or well kill them without being contested, uh, but it doesn't quite work like that in Assassin's Creed 4. I mean it does decrease the range a little bit, but the thing is that it's not enough for a kill or a stun. Usually when it does happen is because well sometimes it's because of lag and issues and blah blah. blah. And the second thing is that when it comes to, oh, in terms of killing, it's really, really ra rare to to get an uncontested kill unless your target for some reason was in the middle of a kill animation. And this is actually one of the best ways to use knives. If your target is within a kill animation and you knife them at e that exact time where they killed this, the, well, it could be a CV or another player, doesn't matter. If you knife them at that exact time, their camera is going to become stuck at a given angle or not stuck but it will become really awkward and uncomfortable for them to move the camera so if you're approaching them from a given angle and they're not really looking in that direction then more than likely you'll be able to get an uncontested kill on them uh, if they don't deploy any abilities of course uh, but yeah so that's one way to use knives offensively as far as it goes for defense then we have one thing since they won uh, the developer said there are no knife stuns. So, but we have in practice realized that there were knife stuns. But, 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 when you further go into what knife stuns are, uh, you understand that they really don't exist because there is a natural way in the game to counter them without using any abilities by just pressing a button. So, you knife the person and, well, the thing is that before learning to counter knife stuns, we really need to understand how they work. Knife stuns, uh, as I said before, okay, decreases their pursuer's kill range, and you approach them to stun them. I want you to come over here, Blade, so I can explain something about knife stuns and other things as well. Yeah, get over here. All right, so I want you to stand on the other side of this uh, railing while I uh, hang from here. I want you to be in a grab kill position for me uh, for on the other side of this rail. Uh, yeah, like, stand over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Alright, so, the thing about Assassin's Creed is that every interaction happens at a... Yeah, get down, Blades. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't stand there, because for what I want to show, it won't really be the best way. Uh, yeah, but get close enough for me to grab kill you. I won't grab kill you, I just want to show something. Uh, so the yeah. thing is... Yeah, yeah, so the thing is that in Assassin's Creed, and this is actually through for previous Assassin's Creed, uh, everything happens at a head interaction level. Like every interaction that happens between players, what's really taken into account is not the entire body of the player, it's only the head. So, uh, what decides whether you can kill a person or stun them, it's just decided by whether their head is within range of your kill or stun range. 
not their body. So, for example, in the position I am now, um, if, well, I don't know, for some reason it doesn't show me the kill prompt. It's not showing me. Uh, what, what the hell is wrong with this? <laughs> well, I think if I press it, it's still gonna kill you, but the thing is that, as you guys know, when you're close to somebody, and this works pretty well if I'm close to blades, you can see that the icon comes above their head, right? So this is more than a significance of the game, of showing you the icon right there. The thing is that you're actually killing or stunning the head, not the body of the player. So, and this is true for line of sight as well. So, for example, if you see somebody and you're trying to screen them using line of sight, what you have to look at when doing the line of sight is the head of the player. And this is actually, uh, I'll actually, when I do this on YouTube, I'll go back to Assassin's Creed 3 and go over the tutorial where it is clearly shown, it's not even a joke, they show you that the line of sight is done by a line, an actual line drawn from your character's head to the other characters, uh, the other player's uh, head. So uh, it, that can really help you when doing screening on a very tight spot, like uh, both your target and his look like are on a really narrow line of sight and they share part of their body, uh, like according to your field of view. So you can just rule them out using their head. Okay, so now that's when it comes to that. Uh, of course, that's also true for stuns, grab kills, acrobatic kills, and other types of kills like bench kills. But it is also true for knife stuns because there are stuns. And the thing about knife stuns is that you want to stun the head, nothing else. When you knife somebody, and there you go, Blade, take that knife. When you knife somebody, their character kind of leans forward a little and at the time when they get knifed at the exact timing when they get knifed their character bends over and their head moves to the right of their character if you're facing them that is your left so for me who is facing blades i see that his character moves his head to the left when he gets knifed so i know i must know i must try if I'm trying to knife stun him, I must try to approach him from the side where his head is going to move. Which is where I am right now. And, well, I kinda killed him there. They didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I thought I was gonna stun him. <laughs> so... The thing is that you really have to remember that it is the head that you're trying to stun, not the body. So, yeah, that's the first principle of a knife stun. And I actually had to practice this for quite a while to actually understand that you really have to move to that side. If you move to the opposite side, you still can get a knife stun, but it will be increasingly difficult the further away you are from the person who you're trying to knife stun. If the person is turned back from you, for example, Blades, uh, look at me, uh, look in my direction uh, right now. Yeah, I wanna from your screen. So for example, right now, my back is turned to where Blades is. If I suspected that Blades was going to try to knife stun me, I'm going to lock him to make him my target. If I su suspected that Blades was trying to knife stun me and I wanted to prevent him from doing that, I will do some sort of fiend where I would approach Blades and then quickly turn around just so that he will throw his knives and uh, my character will be facing away from Blades in such a way that even though I bent over from the knives, then my character is going to be turned around and the head is going to be further away from ba Blades' position. In that sense, it's gonna make it so much more difficult for Blades to get the knife stun. It doesn't matter how good he is doing it, it's gonna increase greatly just because I turned my back to him. But, 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 this is not the final technique I was talking about when I was talking about how to prevent the knife stun. The ultimate way to prevent the knife stun is, um, actually far more simple than that and actually a far more aggressive and beneficial technique than turni turning your back to your pursuer. I mean it perfectly works if you turn your back to your pursuer but even so you can still uh, by certain circumstances uh, get stunned and there's a way to prevent it. So the final way to prevent it is that, and let me explain one more little detail about knife stuns. The reason why knife stuns even happen in this game is because when you knife somebody and you approach them, there's a miscalculation in terms of spacing from the game. Like on your screen and on the other guy's screen, uh, the place where you are and the place where the other guy is, is not the exact same spot. That happens because of two reasons. Well, 
there's a natural delay, there's lag, which happens, it doesn't matter how good your connection is or how close you are to the other person, there's always going to be at least a little lag. I don't have to say a little lag because you guys know that there's more than enough lag for anyone here in Assassin's Creed, no matter how good their connection is. So yeah, that's one thing that causes knife stuns and it's lag. And the second thing is that there is an actual miscalculation in the game in terms, in terms of positioning, like sometimes, for example, and that's, well, you could say it's all as well influenced by lag, but for example, when you knife somebody, they don't stop exactly where you see they're stopping. Like, they may stop a little closer than that, uh, or they may stop a little further away from that, depending on the direction that they were moving at the time. If they were running at you, then the game, um, it, it has kind of like a predictive algorithm of where you're going to be the next, uh, I don't know, millisecond or whatever so the game auto adjusts itself to compensate for lag by making people uh, look closer than they are or further away than they are depending on the direction of their movement that's why i said it's not just dependent on lag i mean of course lag it's going to make this uh, adjustment far more extreme <coughs> or yeah or not as extreme depending on how much lag there is for example when you see a lag pull or when somebody just literally glides from 10 meters away and kills you this is the game trying to adjust for the lag that is between you and that person because on their screen they are they're already killing you so on your screen they are 10 meters away because there's a lot of lag and you have a lot of out of date uh, data but as they kill you on their screen, then the game realizes on your own screen that it, he just cannot be that far away. Like, the game has to find a way to compensate for the lag error. So that's how they do it. Like, okay, character glides away and boom, kills you. Ah, sucks, I know. But that's the real world. And the more you understand that, the more you'll, you'll understand how to play properly. So, alright, that's... That's the last thing I really needed to say before finally giving the explanation that you all guys want to hear. So in order to ultimately prevent a knife stun, all you have to do is that as you're approaching your target, assuming you're going after your target of course, if you're approaching your target, when you get knifed, as soon as you get knifed and until the knives wear off, just press your left stick, press and hold your left stick in the opposite direction that your pursue uh, your target is coming from the reason why this works is because of what I just explained about the game adjusting your position to calculate where you're gonna be the next second or so like the game is going to understand that you're trying to move away from your target and as they approach you to get the knife stun then what's gonna happen is that the game will see as if you're not there you, uh, and they're not close enough so the game is not going to show a prompt for them no, it, 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 in fact, they, they, will, they will get so close, yet your character will not show a prompt. Sometimes, they will get so close, and there, there, there will be no prompt, and you will clean kill them. Clean. No contest. No contest. Even though you're knifed. So, it kind of works the same way around. I mean, it could work the same way for killing. But usually, uh, I mean, it's not really necessary for you to do that uh, to bother uh, pressing away from your pursuer who's trying to kill you using knives but you could as well do it there I mean if you really want to ensure that you can test your your pursuer uh, just press away uh, as long as you need to until they ca they come close enough to try to kill you and then you'll contest them it will always work you will always contest them and it's the same for 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 preventing a knife stun like you get knifed and you just keep pressing away from your from your target and sometimes you can even be facing them I mean if you turn around as, as I explained be before because the head is further away from your um, pursuer target etc it will make it even harder for them to interact with you but if you press away because of the miscalculation that the game has in trying to compass to compensate for your movement uh, you just won't show a prompt. There will be no prompt until it's really, really late. I mean, by the time they see the prompt, they're gonna be so close that either they're dead, 
contested or they're dead clean, which is worse, of course. And we're, of course, gonna practice that blade. So, first of all, I'm not gonna press anything. I'm gonna be facing you. I'm gonna give you the easiest possible position for a knife stun. And you'll try to get it. Of course, I'll mash, I'll mash the kill button to try to kill you. So that is a more realistic example. But yeah, all right, let's all right, do go it. Ahead. Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. There you go, that's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here we go. There you go, well done. Alright, Blade, so now we're gonna prove how it will never even have an other chance <laughs> of working if I do the order correct, as I explained before. I'm going to log you again, and okay. you're going to see that this time, no matter the, how much you approach, like you see that the prompt just doesn't come up. It just doesn't come up at the right time where it should. So here we go. Okay. Well, I think I think you were a little too close there. I mean, uh, you, so people... I was a little bit too close. Yeah, I guess people will not be able to appreciate the difference. But in any case, the thing is that well, you will always be forced into that specific position. They'll, you'll be forced to get so close that you just won't be able to get it. You'll get killed each time. Well, yeah, that's what I, I was looking for. The, I was looking for the uh, prompt. Yeah, you were looking for the prompt, but it will just not come up. So let's try it again. No, no. Uh, again? again. Keep, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yeah, all right. I'll do it again. We have five minutes. Uh, let's. <sighs> damn civilians. <sighs> All right, there we go. go you didn't turn around. No, I didn't turn around, but I got a prompt on you because I. I it doesn't turn around. I'm just pressing the left stick back all the way. I have it. I have it full tilt to the other direction where you're not. So that's what causes the autocorrect. My character doesn't move at all. It doesn't matter. It's like all these things that I'm saying, they happen as I'm hunched over, like when I'm bended over. So let's try. Let's try that again. Yeah, let's try it again. I know you're gonna be skeptical for a while. <laughs> so let's let's do it again. Target has exposed you. Oh. Hmm. So you're just pushing the joystick back as you're hunched, not moving towards me, which is no. what every... Yeah. Well, yeah. Ideally, when, when you get knife stunned, it's just natural instinct to push forward to try to attack that person. That is correct. And that is a mistake. So this, because if you press so forward... Let's, let's, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to ask you to try this a few more times. So go ahead. Because yeah. I, I just... Yeah, if, if you press forward, uh, the autocorrect from the game will actually put you closer to your target, which will make you even more vulnerable to a knife stun. Sometimes you'll actually get close enough to kill them, but that's only like if you were running or stuff. If you were walking, more often than not, it will just make you more vulnerable. Because on your screen, you will not be moving, whereas on their screen, the game will literally interpret that you're close enough for a stun, and that's how you'll get stunned with a knife. But there are no knife stuns. The devs said it. They said it be better than anyone. I mean, they made it such that the distance that you can kill and stun, it's the difference is just not big enough for a stun to happen. So when you start autocorrecting yourself like this, the only way that you can possibly get stunned. Sorry, I'm really. I'm gonna finish and I'm just gonna let you right because I know I speak a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you. Uh, the only way that you guys can get stunned, if you know this, is if you're running at them and then like last second they knife you and stun you like almost immediately because you won't be have enough time to react and press the stick back and you're gonna get stunned. But other than that, I mean, this is it. Doesn't get any, be any better than this. And let's try it again so you can see. Oh well, let's um, let those civilians through. Another civilian. Oh, I hate you civilians. It's all right. You can <laughs> uh, it there, okay, so here I go. Here I go. No, it doesn't give me the freaking prompt, son of a bitch. 
And I clean killed you, by the way. I'm definitely sure you were pressing the... Son of a bitch. Alright, but wait. I, I wanted to try to, to add something to this. Um, yeah, what? To, sure. To the video. I would like to try what you're trying, but I want to be elevated. Oh, we can't. These, these stairs are blocked right here. You I want to be in an elevator. Right. Oh I no! Be in, in, yeah, I mean, height, yeah, height, height also. Play. Yeah, it does matter because of what I said before. Remember that you're always attacking the head. If the head is higher or lower, then that definitely either gives you an advantage or a disadvantage when doing the knife stun. So, for example, if you're in the lower part of a staircase, such as this, uh, and I am at the top, then it's easier for me to stun you. Because your head is closer to me. I mean, it's closer to to my own head as well. Uh, so it's easier to do it. Of, of course, usually it can be a little difficult because, well, I don't know, you don't can't quite get the distance right because uh, the, the staircase changes the distance or the way that you usually measure it. So rather than help you, it will usually just completely screw you because you're not used to doing stunts on on staircases. I mean the more common use is if you want to not be stunned and you know that your target is near a staircase then you try to stay near the, stair the staircase and you kind of walk like I am doing now to try to mess them up entirely I mean like if pressing back on your left stick wasn't enough then like if you stay near a, stair a staircase and they try to stun you there they're, they're fucking dead <laughs> there's not there's no really other way to say it and blades well, why I don't we try this what why don't you why don't I before time ends, I really want to do something. I want to do it the other way around. I want you to log me, and well, people people saw that I was extremely consistent with my knife stun, and I want you to press back on your stick so that they see that it just doesn't come up. So here you go. Yep, it doesn't come up. Come on, Nova. I mean, you you this can't be real. Go ahead and go ahead and, and go ahead and do the because this is crazy right here. Because that's going to be so useful uh, for anybody. Yeah, it is. That's I'd why. I'd love to try it when I'm in an elevated position, but let's go again. I know you can get it. Yeah, uh, oh, no, wait, wait. yeah, lock. Lock. yeah, lock. Lock. yeah. This is the last chance, though. Okay. All right, here we go. No, there's no prompt. Oh well, I got you, but I'm not sure if you. I think you let go, or remember well, no, that you went. I w you went in front of me. I pulled back, but then you went to my other side. Yeah, remember that I said you have to always adjust to their opposite position. So, like, if they move around trying to circle you, right. You ha right. So if they come to the left, and I push to the right. Yes, exactly. Like you have to That's adjust. What you're them. Yes, you you have to adjust. You have to move your stick in such a way that no matter how they move, you are always pressing it in the you're opposite direction. Away from them. Yeah. Got it. So that's how it works. And well, this pro will probably be the end of at least this video for my channel. It's already a pretty long video. It's a Thorax X main I video. I think that's. Uh, but that's I'm solid right there. What we just did. Yeah, but I think that's uh, good enough, and I really hope that. For people watching this and for people on stream as well, it was really useful and uh, you guys... I'm definitely going to pass that forward to my viewers. Yeah, I hope that you guys uh, on stream uh, liked it. I hope that you learned something. Uh, probably, at least at least this, this very last thing that I said, you didn't know it, but pr more than likely you didn't know about the decoy uh, turning from blue to red. and Yeah, so at least you... Because the thing is that once you understand the mechanics of how it works, it's really easy to understand how, why did it fail or how or why did it work. Like when you didn't know how a, a knife stun worked, it will be harder to say like, oh, was it lag or was it something else? But now you guys know, and now you see that if you see that somebody just doesn't show a prompt uh, above their head, then probably it's not because they're laggy, but they're probably using this technique, which I just explained. Uh, me and Blades, we're gonna keep going here, uh, just you know, doing it a few more times um, to show people on stream. Uh, that's your uh, DLC content for people on stream. But as far as YouTube goes, I guess this is the end of it. And well, uh, thanks for watching.